got a little bit of an echo. This track uh, will carry Atlantis just to the west of Lake Okeechobee, 24 miles in altitude, 200 miles to the Kennedy Space Center. Now traveling less than six times the speed of sound. Descending at a rate of 200 uh, feet per second. Time to touch down, nine minutes, 14 seconds. The air data probes are, have been deployed. These are probes on either side of uh, Atlantis's nose uh, that uh, provide pressure, altitude, airspeed, Mach numbers, angle of attack, and rate of descent information for the general purpose computers. Time to touch down eight minutes. Atlantis traveling four times the speed of sound. Atlantis, take air data. Take air data. Six and a half minutes from touchdown. The International Space Station just passed directly over the Kennedy Space Center in advance of Atlantis's landing. Atlantis uh, currently traveling two and a half times the speed of sound, range to touchdown just 69 miles. And it's on energy approaching the hack. No changes to winds or weather. Nominal shoot. No change to winds and weather, nominal shoot. Now looking over the shoulder of uh, pilot Doug Hurley on the flight deck of Atlantis, this pilot point of view camera. Five minutes till touchdown. Atlantis soon will be going subsonic. Our first view through infrared cameras at the Kennedy Space Center.
Commander Chris Ferguson now flying Atlantis. Three and a half minutes until touchdown. Piercing the pre-dawn sky as the space shuttle announces its arrival at the launch site with its signature sound of twin sonic booms having gone subsonic for the last time. Atlantis, on at the 180. Copy, on at the 180. Pilot Doug Hurley now taking a few seconds of stick time on Atlantis. With a fitting elegance for its final moments of flight, Atlantis takes one last lap around the Kennedy Space Center. Atlantis, on at the 90. On at the 90. Commander Chris Ferguson now back on the stick. Atlantis uh, descending at an angle seven times steeper than that of a commercial jetliner. Hey, field beside Houston. Copy, Atlantis. Build inside. As it approaches the runway, Commander Chris Ferguson will flare up Atlantis's nose to burn off excess speed prior to the landing gear deployment by pilot Doug Hurley. Again, the view from the pilot point of view camera, one minute till touchdown. The pre-flare maneuver executed. Landing gear down and locked. Main gear touchdown. Hurley now deploying the drag chute. Ferguson rotating the nose gear down to the deck. Nose gear touchdown. Having fired the imagination of a generation, a ship like no other, its place in history secured, the space shuttle pulls into port for the last time. Its voyage at an end.
We copy your will stop, and we'll take this opportunity to congratulate you, Atlantis, as well as the thousands of passionate individuals across this great spacefaring nation who truly empower this incredible spacecraft, which for three decades has inspired millions around the globe. Job well done, America. Hey, thanks, Butch. Uh, great words. Great words. You know, the space shuttle's changed the way we uh, view the world, and it's changed uh, the way we view our universe. There's a lot of emotion today, but one thing's indisputable. America's not going to stop exploring. Thank you, Columbia, Challenger, Discovery, Endeavor, and our ship Atlantis. Thank you for protecting us and bringing this program to such a fitting end. God bless all of you. God bless the United States of America. Inspiring comments, Atlantis. We'll meet you on 5-3. We'll see you there, bud. Dash eight, we will take rad reconfig. Okay, I think you want rad reconfig at this time. That's affirmative. Atlantis is home. Its journey complete. A moment in history to be savored. Atlantis, when you get there, NH3 activation will be B sec on. B sec on. Is Atlantis? Yep, well, we'll be ready for that when you get above 55. Okay, very good. If you give us a call, we're going to go back and start on 5-3. We'll do it. As you can see, uh, the normal venting of the auxiliary power units on Atlantis, the convoy uh, team will be around the vehicle before long. And uh, Mission Control here under the direction of Entry Flight Director Tony Sakachi will give the crew a green light to uh, shut down the auxiliary power units for the very final time. Hey, Convoy Commander, this is Atlantis. Hey, uh, Tim O'Brien, it's uh, great to be home, and it's awesome, uh, it's awesome to hear your voice. We're ready for ammonia activation on 5 8. Ammonia act on 5 8. Here we go. All right, and just to confirm, B sec on. B sec on. Thanks.
Mission Control Houston. Ready and watching, Chunky. Okay, they're coming up. The external tank umbilical doors are currently being opened. Uh, space shuttle main engines being repositioned, part of the uh, initial uh, safing process for Atlantis. Atlantis, uh, with its landing seven and a half minutes ago, wrapping up its 33rd and final mission over a 26-year career. On this flight, it logged 5,284,862 miles in service to the International Space Station. For 33 flights, Atlantis traveled 125,935,769 miles in 307 days in orbit, circumnavigating the globe 4,848 times. RJDs are off the side hatch drag chute and landing gear are safe. We copy that Atlantis. One switch check on 014, the bottom row, fourth switch from the right. The F1 logic will take that to off if it's not already. Okay, uh, good catch, Butch. Thanks. It's off now. Okay, thanks. And uh, I'm not sure if I told you or not before, but the hydraulic load test is not required. As you heard uh, Commander Chris Ferguson reporting that uh, Atlantis' landing gear now safe. Standing by for the go-ahead uh, to shut down the auxiliary power units, the first glimmer of daylight falling on the Kennedy Space Center. Atlantis, we are go for Ops 9 when you get there. Copy, go for Ops 9. Actually, Atlantis, stand by on the Ops 9 transition for just a second. 
Okay, we'll hold off. We wait uh, for the auxiliary power units to shut down. We now have unofficial landing times for you. For Atlantis's final landing, the unofficial time for nose gear touchdown was a mission elapsed time of 12 days, 18 hours, 27 minutes, 53 seconds, which equates to 4.56 and 57 seconds AM Central Time. Main gear touchdown followed 21 seconds later at 12 days, 18 hours, 28 minutes, and 14 seconds, or 4.57 and 18 seconds a.m. Central Time. And wheel stop marked here in Mission Control. The final wheel stop, the final motion of a space shuttle in program history. 12 days, 18 hours, 28 minutes, 57 seconds, at 4.58 and 1 second a.m. Central Time. Indeed ready, Atlantis. by one second, Chucky. Okay, Chucky, we're ready for SSME repo. This is Mission Control Houston uh, with more updated uh, landing times uh, that are now uh, official from the uh, NASA test director. Uh, the uh, official landing times that we have received here in Mission Control now show main gear touchdown at 12 days, 18 hours, 27 minutes, 56 seconds. That equates to 4.57 a.m. sharp central time. Nose gear touchdown, 12 days, 18 hours, 28 minutes, 16 seconds, or 4.57 and 20 seconds a.m. Central Time. Wheel stop, 12 days, 18 hours, 28 minutes, 55.0 seconds, 
or 4.57.54 a.m. Central Time. Once again, the main gear touchdown, mission elapsed time, 12 days, 18 hours, 27 minutes, 56 seconds, or 4.57 a.m. Central Time. If you so desire, you can doff suits. And Fergie, we're with you in PCS DAC on page 5-10. Once you complete that and GPS power down, we'll be with you for extended power up. Okay, go to Dodge Suits and uh, we'll see you on page 5 dash 10. Nose gear touchdown now marked officially at 12 days, 18 hours, 28 minutes, 16 seconds, 4.57 and 20 seconds a.m. Central Time. And wheel stop officially marked now at 12 days, 18 hours, 28 minutes, 50 seconds. 4.57, 54 a.m. Central Time. We are ready for that, Atlantis. Pilot uh, Doug Hurley now in the process of uh, shutting down the auxiliary power units. The initial uh, team of convoy engineers uh, now gathering around the shuttle Atlantis, which uh, landed at 4.57 a.m. Central Time, 5.57 a.m. Eastern Time to wrap up its 33rd and final mission and the last flight in space shuttle program history.